Ladies and gentlemen, a new snapshot for Minecraft Java Edition 1.14 The Village and Pillage Update has been released. My name is Sliced Lime, I'm here to take you on a comprehensive tour of 19W04A. Let's start with the gameplay because the stone cutter now has functionality. It can be crafted using three stone blocks and one iron ingot, and it has a user interface as well. It quickly lets you select any type of stairs, slabs, brick blocks or walls that can be made from the stone type you input. That includes multiple steps like making stone brick stairs out of just stone and also makes one stair block from one stone block which is more efficient than crafting it in a crafting table. Do note that crafting all the blocks are still available in the crafting table, the stone cutter simply provides a new alternative. Like I said, it can make stairs, slabs, bricks and the walls from the input materials cobblestone, all types of stone and polished stone, sandstone, brick and nether bricks, quartz and all types of prismarine, and stone and stone bricks, and the mossy variants for the stone types that have them. It does seem that the smooth stone slab is currently missing from the recipes, so we'll see if that gets added down the line. There's also a new sound effect for crafting a block with the stone cutter. There are a number of bug fixes to the other new crafting blocks and the new blocks added for Minecraft 1.14. Pushing a composter that has been filled up with material but that has not yet converted will make it unable to compost their contents. Clicking on the recipes button in a blast furnace or smoker will return the fuel to your inventory, reset the cooking progress and delete the output if there is any. That bug is fixed in this version. If you locked a map using a cartography table, then the map would get duplicated that's fixed in the snapshot. If you took a book from a lectern but your inventory was full, then the book would get deleted that's also fixed in this version. Campfires would deal damage to entities even if they were not touching the campfire and even if the campfire was not lit, you would still get hurt if you stood on it. And replacing lava with a campfire would create an unlit campfire. Finally, scaffolding didn't show up on maps, that's fixed in this snapshot. Let's talk about worlds, there are a number of fixes to worlds and world generation. First of all, a new progress message now appears when you load in an old world that's upgrading structured data. I think that might be related to the bug that I happened upon in a recent livestream, where had the data inside of structure files didn't upgrade. There was also a message of progress.working that showed up when entering worlds, that's gone now. There are also a number of changes to the actual world generation. Farm structures in all village types have been updated, they now include composters. And as with previous village changes, I have updated my village showcase worlds. All of them are available in a link in the video description. Let's start out in the desert village one where the farms used to look like this, but the new ones now look like this. You will notice that there are some composters stuck in into the farms, and this one has even grown to the side here with a special little space for a composter. Moving on to the plains biome villages, you have the old farms here, and both the big one and the small one have been updated to include composters, two composters in the big one. The savannah type of villages have had all three types of farms updated. You can see the old versions here and over here the new ones. You can see that there are composters in the corner of the big one over here and in the smaller ones there are composters centrally placed within the farm itself. For snowy villages we only had these two small variants of farms. Both of them have been updated and they have gotten a composter each. And for Taiga Villages we also have all three farm types updated, they used to look like this. And as you can see they all now got composters as well. That is not all for Taiga Villages however. They're both added things to the Taiga set of structures and also some changes. Let's start by looking at these ones. These are two new decoration types, one with this large campfire thing placed on top of trapdoors and this one which looks to be just a jigsaw block and it is actually just a jigsaw block but it is a jigsaw block that matches the connection and then turns into a campfire so this one will be a single campfire when it is spawned in. We also have an entirely new type of house this is one of the medium type houses and it has a campfire inside of the chimney producing these nice smoke particles and if we go inside you'll see that it has kind of a chimney with a furnace down here. 
Also keep in mind that there's still a bug with structure blocks that means they don't properly spawn in beds. So if there are empty spaces that look like there should be a bed there, there probably should be a bed there. And actually when the structures are used in jigsaw mode, there will be a bed there. In addition to those additions, there are also updates for a number of houses. There are updates for the armorer's house, or if you can even call this a house, but anyway, it has gotten a campfire added to the front of it. There is an update to the butcher house, you can see that that also now has a chimney with a campfire. And finally, there is an update to the cartographer house, which doesn't have that much of a change in itself. The only change is this jigsaw block, which marks out the entrance. But those aren't all the village changes. We are now in a completely new village showcase world. This one is for a new type of village called the zombie desert village. That's right, there's a new type of village for undead villagers in the desert biome. They have a number of very similar things to the normal desert villages, but there's much less variety and there's definitely some new things in it. Let's start with the road pieces. They are very similar. These are two corner pieces, then three different crossroad types, two square pieces that are these ones, and then three straight road pieces as well, and finally a little turn. Then we have the town centers, very similar to the normal desert versions. Two medium style houses. And then eight different small houses. I'm not going to go in and look at all of these because they are very similar to the normal desert style houses. However, these are news. There are structure blocks for the village types. That is the armorer, the butcher, the cartographer, the cleric, the farmer, the fisherman, the fletcher, the leather worker, the librarian, the nitwit, the shepherd, the toolsmith, one that is simply called unemployed, and the weaponsmith. But even that is not all, here we are in yet another new showcase world with yet another new village type. This time it is the Taiga Zombie. As with the Desert Zombie villages, these are very similar to their non-zombie versions but have less variety in them. However, the Taiga ones have a bit more variety than the Desert ones. Let's start out with three types of corner pieces to the roads. They are these, all of them pretty big except this last one. Then six different types of crossroads, varying shapes and sizes. Six different straight pieces as well. And then finally, a small turn piece. These villages also have meeting points, pretty similar to how the taiga villages look. There's one farm type, the large variety of farm has been brought over from the normal taiga villages, including the new composter. Then we have four types of medium houses. You might recognize these again from the normal taiga village generation, including the new house with the smoke coming from the chimney. And then we have five different small house variants. Again, I'm not going to go into all of these because they're pretty similar to the normal taiga versions, but they have of course zombie villager spawn positions inside of them. The zombie taiga version also has a specific version of the armorer house. However, note that this one does not have the new campfire out front. It also has a special version of the cartographer house, the fisher cottage, the library, the shepherd's house, and the temple, toolsmith, and a weaponsmithy. Zombie tiger villages also have jigsaw pieces for the zombie villagers with the armorer, the butcher, the cartographer, the clerk, the farmer, the fisherman, the fletcher, the leather worker, the librarian, the nitwit, the shepherd, the toolsmith, again an unemployed variety, and a weaponsmith. Alright, those were all the world changes, let's move on to visuals. Lightning did not appear in the previous version, that is fixed in this version. The hat layer on your player model's head was offset, that has been fixed in this version. And the unlit campfire texture was partially missing, that is also fixed. For commands and map making things, there are news and updates as well. 
First of all, there's a new custom recipe type. It is stone cutting and it will of course add recipes for the stone cutter. If you ran slash summon with the wrong entity ID, then you would summon a pig that's fixed in this version. And using the at e selector with a type equals selector argument in the chat window would not auto fill properly. As for performance and stability, this version contains new improved collision code which improves performance. However, it is a little debatable whether this is actually improved or not because when you are touching any block, such as if you end up inside any block or if you walk up against any block, your character cannot do many things. That includes jumping, so it is really hard to jump up a hill in this version, for instance. Now that just goes to show that snapshots are experimental versions and can contain unknown bugs. And also remember if you do upgrade to a snapshot you can never downgrade that world again. So make sure you try this version on a test world or on a backup of your world if you want to try it. Now to get this version head into your Minecraft launcher, open the menu bar and go into the options tab. Here switch on enable snapshots, read the message of warning and click ok then head back to your news tab. Now you'll have a drop down box with a latest snapshot option in it. Select that and start the game to play the latest snapshot or pre-release, which is currently this one, Minecraft Snapshot 19W04A. And that was all from me for this time. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please help me out in return and leave a like. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news, then subscribe to my channel where I do update videos for every new version and snapshot released. My name is Sliced Lime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.